Hey yo, it's the Mussolini, aka your boy Moose, man. I'm on that Mike Powell show. You know what we doing? We feeding the culture with that real shit, man. Shout out to my guy, Mike Powers, man. What's poppin'? It's your boy Mike Powers. Back with another flame interview, as you already probably know. First of all, let's get to some shout outs. Rock City Mark, good looking. Palatial Slumlord, I see you. Before we actually get started, started. You know, we lost another great of the entertainment industry this week. Uh, Chadwick Boseman sadly passed from stage four colon cancer. A giant in the industry, a giant amongst his people. Mad love being shown on IG, Twitter, Facebook, and all that uh, for the Black Panther. So we do want to have just a moment of silence for somebody that was gone too soon. We're going to do that right now. And now, for my real hip hop heads only, I sincerely owe you a debt of gratitude because without you, it may have taken me some time to discover my next guest. You made it possible for the gifted Toronto native Danielson to make his debut appearance on this platform. And let us not minimize the import of this particular event. They call him underground and below the radar, but those words do nothing to describe this man's level of skill and mastery of the craft. We have all arrived in this place to celebrate. Daniel's son, it is clear to me, has actually studied the science, retained the lessons, and has offered something to the market that begs of our attention. There is a voice that taunts from the wilds of the North, a voice that paints pictures in stunningly precise linguistic street tapestries. I would say that this young master of the genre projects in 4K, but like Nas' transition through the eras of CDs to streaming, the man you see on the left side of your screen will still have rappers shaking like a broken muffler when the next technology arrives and the next one after that. Everything about this man reminds us of why we fell in love with this shit in the first place. Ladies and gentlemen and lovers of authentic hip hop, I do not exaggerate when I say it gives me great pleasure to welcome for the first time on the Mike Power Show, the brown bag money lyrical finishing move, AKA the bully at the border, AKA Daniel Sanzarelli, yes! Daniel's son is in the building. My man, that was the best. That was the best intro ever, bro. I never <laughs> been, that was crazy, bro. That's bars, man. You got bars, my bro. Hey, good look. I appreciate you for saying that, man. You know, I just, yeah, uh, I, I got nice right before here. My mouth all chapped up and shit. <laughs> but we got Kill the water that, on. Bro. We got the water on deck. We going to get through it. You looking good. You looking healthy. Hell man. yeah, man. Hey, thank you for coming on the platform. So let me just say this first of all. Let me just go ahead and get this out the way. Um, so you and I communicated on IG. We went back and forth uh, setting this thing up. And at one point, I want to make this clear. At one point, I said to you, I have no problem accommodating your schedule. You a star. You said, no, yo, it's not about the star thing. And other people have told me that you carry yourself in a very humble nature, but I need to say this. We're not going to run around, whether it be you, G4, Ito, Spesh, none of them. We're not going to pretend like y'all guys ain't stars, right? So I'll tell you what I mean. If Whitney Houston was the touchdown, if Anita Baker was the touchdown, they get in the royal treatment because they stars. Let's not get it twisted that because y'all don't got 145 million streams that you're not a star. You're a fucking star. And it, it's, it's about the acumen. It's about the skill level. It's about the voice. It's about the love that you put into it. And it's about how effectively you managed to dominate this sport using the tools that God gave you. You a star, my dog. What the fuck? Oh, man. I appreciate you, bro. I appreciate you, man. I just want to get that out the way. I'm talking to a star. Don't have me thinking I'm getting excited for no reason. I'm getting excited for a reason, bro. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's Daniel son. He is in the building. And really, my people have been telling me and this happens a lot for a long time. 
you have you heard Daniel's son? Didn't didn't know who you was maybe four months ago. Mm -hmm. Finally tapped in. I forgot how I tapped in. First time I heard the voice. First time I heard the voice. Stuck. Stuck. So let me ask you this. Well, I'm going on this long ass rant. They did not click the video to see me. They clicked it to see you. How long you been rapping? Since I was 11, man. So like uh, almost like 19 years, bro. What was the thing that got you hooked on hip hop to begin with? Um, what got me hooked on it? Just you know, just growing up, man. Uh, just the area I was growing up. Um, I would go to my uncle's house. My uncle Danny, he had a studio in the basement. You know, just you know, watching Freestyle Friday battles and all that. I got I got hooked on it, man. Just just everything, man, from the fashion. I used to break dance when I was a little kid, all that, bro. What? I was I was all the way in, bro. Now I'm about to edit this real quick because I'm about to run off because you know what? I didn't get my Ethernet cord plugged up. That's what happened. So we did a quick edit real quick. It was my fault. I didn't have my Ethernet plugged up. We wanted this to be clean for the viewer. Um break dancing. You were surprised. So you would you you know how to do it. I could get up at up rock right now. I know how to do the up rock, but I'm fat as fuck and we're not about to do that. But so you do the up rock, the, the helicopter spin, the I could bust a windmill. I could probably still bust a clean windmill, you know. You got enough room right there? <laughs> nah, nah. nah. <laughs> Yo, no. Yeah, you're gonna need Obamacare for that one. Um so this might be a stupid question. Is your is the name Daniel Son related to the karate kid movie? I mean, it is, but uh, my real name is Daniel, and my uncle, my uncle Terrence, he called me Daniel Son ever since I was a little kid, you know, so it is related to the movie, but it has, like, more personal meaning, too, you know, my uncle called me that ever since I was a little kid. Got you. So you said a little bit to do with the Karate Kid. Can you do the crane kick? Hell yeah. Can you know how to crane kick a motherfucker in his face if I have to? <laughs> <you know? laughs> if that come up with one of your bars, give me credit. Because <laughs> I think... You know how to implement all type of metaphors in there. So you're from Toronto. We all know that Drake is from there. Um, what is the underground hip hop scene like in Toronto right now? Um, I mean, it's kind of what kind of it, man. Uh, other than like my squad, like Brown Bag Money, like A Sun, Eastwood, my man uh, Cipher Soze, Family Gang, Black. Um, I mean, shout out Lord Juco, Falcon Outlaw. You know, Raz Fresco, Baker's Club. That's about it, man, because Toronto's kind of got its own sound, you know, with the R&B trap sound and a lot of lot of big bubbling artists in Toronto, bro, that do millions of streams, but they don't, they're not making the type of music we're making, you know? So mm -hmm. we're kind of holding it down for the underground, um, but Toronto's just a big music, got a big music scene just in general, you know? Obviously with Drake opening that up and uh, the cast like The Weeknd, Party Next Door, but um, there's a lot of there's a lot of big artists like young artists coming up that drop do hundred thousand streams first day, like or they got an organic following, you know. Mm -hmm. So yeah. there's a lot of talent in the city, man, for sure. So like, so you mentioned a few names that I'm 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 hip to. Uh, I, I hate to get ahead of myself. I know Asen Eastwood. You know, I've talked to him a couple times. I love what he's doing. A very smart dude. I even click on some of his stories when he um. When he just talking about real life issues, he had some on IG. I think a couple of weeks ago, some a Karen caught up with him in the elevator, and some things went down. Um, and he handled it like like a gentleman, so I appreciate that. I, I like listening to what he got to say. I like his lyrics, like his voice. Raz Fresco, I just got hip to who I'm starting to like. And you said Falcon Outlaws from Toronto? I didn't know that. Yep, yes sir. That's my big homie, man. Shout out my man Falcon Outlaw, High Heat Records, my man Jason Banks. Yes, sir, man. Well, He's good. got a new project dropping with Camo Monk, man. That's West Detention. That shit gonna be doing damage, man. Yo, let me. So, I be having to do research. There's so many of y'all out here spitting flames. Um, and so now I'm gonna take the cliff notes because I posted Falcon Outlaw what a couple weeks ago. What's the name of that song I posted? Was it uh, Extendos? Extendo clip. Yeah, that joint's <laughs> nasty, man. Nasty. Oh. Yo, um, and d dreads over the face. I'm looking for other videos of this guy. I see number dreads over the face. Uh -huh. What is the story with with Falcon Outlaw? Yo, that man. That's a guy worth having on the show, bro. That's a guy worth having on the show. That guy's he's a little bit older than me. You know, he's one of the OGs out here. So 
he's got a. I just got nothing but love and respect for him, man. Me and him, we got lots of uh, records in the stash. We got like a project that we're working on, and you know, you got to get him on the on the podcast on the show one of these days and get him to tell it. You know, I don't want to tell his story for him, but Good. very interesting dude, man. Cool ass dude. That's like I got a lot of lot of I come I came up uh, around a lot of uh, cats older than me. You know. Yeah. So. Yo, his name rings heavy in the streets, bro. That's all I can say, man. Shout out my man, Falcon Outlaw, bro. I'm Big coming homie back and hit him with the extendo clip. Woo, that video too, boy. Nasty. Not playing. Nasty. Not playing. When I saw that, I said, this shit is going right up on my fucking page. You know what happened when I did that? Boom. Cats went crazy on my page when they seen that shit. Never had heard it. Didn't know who do it was. But they was like, yo, what's this? So yep. it's, it's the golden ears over here. You know what I mean? They work. I, I mean, uh, is there more appreciation uh, of the real shit in Toronto as opposed to what you see over in the States? I would say that there's uh, less of an appreciation for it, bro. Less. Oh. Like, uh, just because Toronto is known for what it's known for, you know? We got Toronto has its signature sound now. Mm -hmm. And so anybody that's not really bringing that sound is is kind of getting slept on, you know. But we have one of the legends, Carter Now, official. He he's on a new project, Bite the Bullet. You know, oh, he's a true to, legend, and he's been showing that. us a lot, showing us a lot of love. And so you know, hopefully we can break that mold, you know, and break through a little bit more in Toronto. But when it comes to marketing, like we never really marketed ourselves out here. We always tried to market ourselves in Europe and and on, on the East Coast and in the states. Okay, and do people do people who live in Toronto? Because I keep seeing uh, different ideas about this online. Do people that live in Toronto call Toronto the six? Depends how old you are. <laughs> if you're young, the younger generation they call it the six. But the older, the older cats and the OGs they call it TO. They call it Screwface Cat, Screwface Capital. You know, they call it TO, T dot TO. That's what we call it. I never call it the six. Got you. Okay, and so. Um, are you a fisherman? Hell yeah. Okay. Hell yeah. I'm working at a fishing lodge. That's where I'm at right now. I'm working at a fishing lodge right now. Okay, because that's I went to your IG page and I saw I see you with these giant fish. Fish that look like they can eat you, quite <laughs> frankly. Right. And I'm like, is this guy a fish? So tell me what's going on. You're on an island? Yeah, I'm working on an island right now, you know, since everything uh all the I mean, my shows got shut down. I was supposed to go to Boston and the corona hit. You know me, I go to New York, I go to Rochester, I go to Buffalo every two, three weeks I'm in Rochester, you know? So all that got shut down, borders are shut down. So I've been coming up to this place called French River for the last six years, a couple times a year, go fishing. And it's crazy up here. It's legendary fishing up here. Yeah. And, you know, they gave me a job opportunity, so I hopped on it. You know, just why not humble myself a little bit, get myself out of the city, you know, a lot of danger, like uh, a lot of shit been going on, man. My last show got shot up, so shit been going crazy out there. So you know, I just got out the city and and did something different for a little bit. You know, do we know anything about the circumstances surrounding your last show getting getting shot? Did you feel that energy coming? Was that a surprise attack? Was it aimed at you? It was aimed at me. Yeah, they sh they, sh they shot at me, bro. But uh, um, I didn't. In Toronto right now, it's just a, a violent, a lot of violence, you know? So it's always kind of, anytime you're in the city limits, like, you got to always kind of be thinking about it and moving accordingly. But I didn't, I mean, yo, they caught me lacking, bro, so I wasn't really thinking about it. We got checked by security, so I didn't have nothing on me. And it just happened so fast, bro. It just Did this happen, happened, in, so, it happened inside the spot? Inside the venue, yeah, inside the venue. And okay. while Falcon Outlaw was giving an anti-gun violence speech on the stage, that's when the shooting happened. Wow. That's crazy. And you're on stage next to Falcon. I wasn't on stage. I was at the front uh, where the guy had his gun out already trying to get in, bullying the security. And then I got into a tussle with the shooter. And then I got separated from the shooter. And he bucked one shot at me, hit the, hit the ground right in front of my foot. And then I got thrown out the way. And then everybody, everybody started running. Okay, and then they and then they got you up out of the venue. That was it for that evening, right? Yeah, they shut the police came, shut the venue down. I ended up running. I was I, I got thrown out the way, and then I was running, hopping fences. You know, then I went back inside, and then I seen this because it, it was me and the shooter. Like we got into a tussle, bro. I snuffed the shooter trying to knock him out, take his gun. But there was too much people around me. I didn't get to hit him too clean. I hit his ass hard, though, but I didn't get to knock it. I wanted to knock his ass out, take his gun. You know, that was what was going through my head. 
And shit, bro. By the time I went back inside, the police were looking at the security footage, and I could see me on the footage. So I was like, oh, fuck, I got to get out of here, bro. And now we, and so we know that, and this is not on that same level, you know, yet, right? But we know, you know, what happened. There was Biggie, there was Pac, there was this violence that's going on in hip hop. You know, we, we, we all try to speak out against it. Uh, obviously, you was not the aggressor in the circumstance. And thank God uh, you got out of there with your life intact. Now, but the person who you got into this tussle with, this was a stranger. You hadn't seen him before? I've never seen him. The weird thing was, I mean, he was all fucked up, bro. He had crazy eyes going. He was on something. And he was saying, I'm like telling him, I'm like, bro, you got to get out of here. You know, he already had his gun out, bro. I'm like, yo, you got to get out of here. You're going to bring the police over here. You're going to get our show shut down. He's telling me, he's like, yo, I'm your biggest fan. I love you guys. I love you guys. And then I'm like, nah, man, you got to leave, bro. Like, you're out of here. And then that's when he started aggressing, putting his gun on my leg and shit. And just escalated from there, you know? Well, I mean, thank God you uh, made it out of there. We we hope that um that dude gets some help. You know what I mean? Cause um yo, they caught his ass, man. Police caught his ass. They found his thumb print on the on the shell casing in the floor. So I guess he already had he had already got printed before. And somebody let me know. Uh, somebody that was at the show, then their brother's the police or something, and they were like, yeah, they ended up catching that guy. So, oh, well, he's a dumbass, anyways, man. Stupid ass motherfucker, man. Word up. I agree. Um, and on, on, and thank you for sharing that with us, by the way. On Bite the Bullet, uh, that's the new album. First of all, it's a classic. I'm not speaking in hyperbole. I listen to this motherfucker. It's, a, it's right here on the paper. That's why I put it on there, because that's what the fuck <laughs> it is. So talk to me about the process of putting that together. I mean, that that whole tape was just kind of, just around, it's just kind of like the aura of the city right now. You know, it's like anytime. Just got to be ready to bite the bullet, you know, and that whole situation that happened at the show. I was thinking, like, I don't want any of the supporters, any of the fans to get hurt, you know? So I was ready to bite the bullet for everybody in there, you know? I'd rather, you know? I wow. wasn't even, it ain't, it ain't about being no hero or nothing like that. It was just how it all went down, you know? I was close enough. We were in close quarters, so I really had no choice, you know? My hand was forced. So that's just, that's just the aura and, like, um just kind of the vibe of the city right now, you know? Gotta be ready to bite the bullet, man, for the greater good. And you didn't want to be that guy later on uh, saying, I wish I could have did something. You was in a position to do something and you took action. Yo, there was a lot of people in position to do something around me, bro. And I was the smallest out of all of them, bro. I was looking around, looking at all these big dudes. I'm like, yo, how come nobody's doing anything, you know? Yeah. So then it... Then, then the op the opportunity presented itself. I took my shot, bro. Man, I wish it would have went differently, bro. I wish I would have knocked his ass clean out and took his gun from him, but it didn't go down like that, you know. Right. I feel you. I feel you. Uh, and but while we on this topic, uh, bite the bullet. Y'all have to go listen to this and go cop that when you do. I'm giving you my full throated recommendation for this album. I'm telling you it's a classic. If you listen to it and you think it's not a classic, come talk to me in the comment and tell me how crazy <laughs> I am. That's what you do. Um, so you and uh, shut up, shut up my man, shut up my man Future Wave on the beats, man. Mix and master. Shut up my man A Sun killing every verse. We got some good features on there, man. Mooch and, and uh, Rob Gates from The Cloth. Woo! What's we got on there? We got Rome Streets. Shout out my man, Rome Streets, man. Al Davino on that. Cardinal on that, man. Shout out Cardinal. Hell yeah, man. I love that record, man. It's a good, it's a good project. Rome Streets. That's Listen, and that's a name. I hate doing business on my show, but he's one of the greats. So, yes, Rome Streets. I'm trying to holler at you. Mm -hmm. You already know this, Rome. Let's make Shout out happen. Rome, man. I got to holler at the, I gotta holler at the man. Rome killing um, shit, man. Rome killing shit, man. So you and, you and Aeson, is, am I saying it right? Aeson? Aeson. 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 Yep. Y'all like brothers, right? Um, what, what is it? What's, what did he bring to the table? Talk to me about that. I mean, he's just a legend, man. Just a legend of a human being, you know? He just brings... Just like a lot of wisdom, you know, a lot of charisma, just good vibes. That's one of the funniest dudes, you know. Like when we when we're kicking it, we're always laughing, we're always we're always cracking jokes, you know. It's always good times whenever me and, and Ace link up, bro. It's just he's just an animal, man. He's a bully from Belize, yo. He's a real bully, you know, real bully from Belize. 
Oh, yeah. Yo, I got to talk to him about Belize. Belize. Because back in the day, somebody was telling me everything was sweet in Belize. You could do all type of – an American could go over there and start getting money, and they was talking about the uh, <laughs> the medicinals was good. I don't know. I mean, he, he going to have to tell me. But you know why I'm mad at a son? I'm really – I'm upset. And the reason why – because he comes up on the timeline on my IG. He one of these fucking big dudes that look good. He like chubby, but he still wear the shit. Me, I'm just, I'm, I'm, somebody called me like the black Homer Simpson one time. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, I guess that's because I'm working on it. But he a husky dude, but he carried the shit well. You know what I mean? So, no, nah, I'm just playing with the dude. Hey, hey, son, an athlete, man. He nimble on his feet, you know, and he could ball, man. He got, he got a good jumper. A son of athlete, man. So Word. he a bigger dude, but he 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 fly, man. He fly. His whole aura is fly, you know. Yeah, he's just a fly dude, man. Cool dude. Just somebody that anybody anybody could benefit from having him on their squad. You know, he make any any team better. That's what's up. Um, you seem to have an intimate understanding of the mechanics of hip hop. I'm saying this very deliberately. This is, these are questions that I'm writing while I'm listening to the music. And that came into my head. You have an intimate understanding of the mechanics. Um, you develop your own flow, your own cadence and attitude. Who did you study coming up? Man, I studied a lot of Red Man. Red Man was my favorite, still is my favorite to this day. You know? Um, a lot of Raekwon. You know, Raekwon is the one who taught me to, you know, kind of speak in codes. So, a lot of Raekwon, a lot of Red Man. Yo, this is dope. Keep on going, bro. A lot of Big L, man. A lot of Big L for sure. Yeah. And that they just listening to them and, like, the beats that they were rhyming on, that's just kind of gave me the blueprint of, like, the kind of music that I wanted to make, you know? Got you. And you said Red Man is one of your favorites. My favorite. My absolute favorite. So if I say water. so if I say visines for eyes, you would finish by saying, "Ah oh, man, you can't put me on the spot like that, bro." <laughs> I'm gonna edit that. Out. I'm gonna edit that whole part out. I don't like to. I don't like to do people like that. Nah, you can keep that. You can keep that, man. No, you, it's know, the, you know what it is? It's Funkarama. That's where it's Funkarama. from. Funkarama, hell yeah, bro. I love, that's I watch that music video all the time. Black and white music video with the ski goggles on, bro. Dude, it's like the classic New York shit, right? You know what I mean? Yeah. Plus, he got the vibe. He rocking on the rooftop. He's like, exactly. vibe for eyes when you smoke the Thai weed. For this, you need a journalist, scientist. Keep your eye on this. Funk cosmical, far from logical. I blow the spot up in any hood in boondocks. Make the bully of the block move and get new locks. No, yeah, look, yeah. it's the phenomenal astronomical. Oh. Let me stop. Let me stop. I'm bad, I'm bad at uh, memorizing. I'm bad at memorizing my own shit, bro. You could... You could pull up one of my own bars and I won't know what's my shit, bro. Good. And you can't get mad at me if I fuck up with your shit. Hey, but hey, this I don't think this is on my list. Fuck it. I'm just I'm going off Cherry Beach. God damn. Foreign chauffeur. Foreign chauffeur is doing too much for me right now. It's doing too fucking much. Every I have to resist the urge to turn it on because I've been letting my girl hear that like six times a day for like three weeks. Like, Hell yeah. what y'all do on that fucking song? The feeling that you bring to that song, the way the video was fucking shot, the fucking chorus on the song, it's a fucking, it's a 10 out of 10, bro. Like, Thank you, man. I just want to say that. Sometimes I just kiss ass during interviews. I'm fan of this. Shout out my man Rome Streets on that, man. He blessed that one. And then uh, my first time ever going to New York, New, New Jersey, New York. We shot that one in Brooklyn, though. And hell yeah, man. Rome pulled up, you know. Got to meet Rome for the first time. You know, we done kicked it many times since. But it was all it was all good vibes, man. It was like we had already known each other, you know. So that was a really good time, man. Th th those were real good times, man. I look back on those days like, Shit, bro, I can't believe how much time it's been since that. You know, it's been like two, three years since we shot that video. Ooh. So, hell yeah, man. I love that joint. I'm going to say this as MC to MC. Let's not front. Niggas have to be on their fucking A game when Rome Street show up. Like, That's 100%. 100% facts. He will see. He gonna fuck around, steal your song if your shit ain't all the way together. And I, what I love about it is everybody I see with Rome, they... 
they hold their own in there. Like they do their thing with them. You know what I mean? There's no fall off from one MC to a, to another. You come on the fucking song, you kill it, right? You see, as soon as you see Rome face, you like, oh my god, like. This really about to be nasty. And like I say, that's a classic fucking cut. But yeah, you gotta be on your A game when Rome Street show up. Um but I listen to uh Yo, you gotta if yeah. if you're on the same show as Rome, like if you're if like I've been on the many, many same shows, you know? You gotta bring your A game just knowing that Rome is gonna kill his set, bro. Rome is one of those dudes where I'm like, yo, you nervous? You nervous before the show? He's like, nah, I can't wait to get out there. I'm always nervous before shows, bro. So I'm like, yo, this guy's a different type of animal, you know? Rome is a beast, bro. Nothing but love for Rome, man. Go get that head crack. Future wave in Rome streets. Go get that, man. No doubt. Shout to Rome. Um, you seem very comfortable inside your flow. Um, was this always your style, the style that we're hearing now? Was this always your style? Was there any ever, uh, ever any attempt to dabble in what the mainstream is doing or no? I mean, yo, me and Rome got a joint called Don't Spill on um, my Moonshine Mix 2. And Rome comes in with that classic Rome, you know, killing it. And then I kind of go with like a little bit of a trap flow on it, you know, and switch mm. it up. So I like to, I got trap joints, man. I, I, I like to just, I like, if that's the mood or if I hear, if I hear a dope beat, you know, I'll, I'll switch it up for sure, you know. I got a lot of trap joints that might never get released that are dope. And... You know, I got my little pocket. You know, I know where my pocket is, but I try to get outside of it once in a while. And you feel like you feel like um, the best of uh, early '90s. You feel like the best of it. You know what I mean? And I, you, you, you feel like that transition from late '80s into early '90s. And I mean, in terms of the the care you take to to craft the lyrics and how they come across, right? So the vibe of the whole thing. Um, and you take it very serious. So I would be interested to hear you on some trap beats because I don't think I've heard those. Um, but this pocket that, you know, the, the one that I think a lot of people already love you for, it seems like you was born to, you know, spit in that pocket. I mean, do you feel like that, that that's a natural fit for you? Yeah, man, it is. It is a natural fit, man. I came up battling, you know, came mm. up battling. And I was always, it was always like mob deep, like burn or shook ones or you know like i was i've been rhyming in this pocket for a long time man long ass time like like i said bro i'm about to turn 31 in a month i've been rapping since i was 11 12 i was recording my own shit you know so bro i was recording on scarface my block those instrumentals oh, from yeah. back then you know so this is this is just the pocket that uh this is just i make the type of music that i want to listen to you know because it's just uh, what I was influenced by, you know. So, yeah, I feel like this is this is the pocket I was destined for. But I could I could switch it up, man. I could do some shit, man. I could do some trap shit for sure. So when I listen to a song like uh, "Old Saloon," it sounds like you are in a zone. Um, what's the process for you to get into that particular pocket, and how do you elevate yourself uh, to that vibe? To my old saloon now. O Saloon was just like, that's all Future Wave, man. Future Wave sent me the beat. Boom, I'm hearing it. I'm I'm drinking Coronas. I'm smoking good trees. And then, boom, it just, then the beat just starts talking to me, you know? I don't even think about it. I just start writing. Yeah. So it's not even, a, there's not, it's not really even a process anymore because I done did it so many times, put so much hours into it that it's just like, my mind knows what to do now. With the beat, if the beat hits me like that, where I could just start, I don't even need to think. I just start writing. I start typing all my shit. You know, boom, 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 boom. Next thing you know, sixteen is done. Boom, 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 boom. Now the hook is done, and it's like right to the mic. You know, straight to the mic. How much of an influence is Mob Deep on you, if any? Definitely the instrumentals, man. Because I grew up, like I said, I grew up. I mean, I remember when on Freestyle Friday, they used the Burn instrumental for like five straight Fridays, you know? That's yeah. that's one of my favorite beats ever. And, you know, as I got older, you know, shit, man, Prodigy, just everything, man, Havoc, you know, they, they weren't, um, I mean, they, it was always easy to find Mob Deep instrumentals, you know? Whenever, mm -hmm. if I was on LimeWire, whatever, I was getting instrumentals off when I was young. It was always easy to find Mob Deep instrumentals, and they always had the, some of the dopest instrumentals ever. So they definitely had a, when it comes to like beats that I wanted to rap on, they had a, a major influence on me. 
and shout to have too. You know what I mean on the boards. You know what I mean? Um, For sure, big time. Yeah. Hey, so you used to watch Freestyle Fridays? Yo, every Friday we used to. I would watch Freestyle Friday. We used to have Freestyle Friday at my school, man. We would battle each other on Fridays, do the whole shit. So it was this was this in the lunchroom? This was in the class. The teacher was for this shit. Out, outside on recess. Oh, okay. And no fist fights after somebody lost? Nah, almost, you know, a couple times almost, you know, some some cats' feelings will get hurt and shit, but nah, no no real scraps, nah. So you watch uh, uh Freestyle Friday all the time. Remember Blind Fury from that from there? You remember? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dude was nasty. Do you think you could take Blind Fury? Yeah, I feel like I could take Blind Fury. Because this guy is still alive. I can reach him probably on IG. So he going to see this. Nah, he's a beast, man. He's a beast, bro. I was watching it back from, like, the Poster Boy days. You know, Poster Boy, Jen, Avalanche. Um, Who else was killing it, man? That big dude. I think he was from Baltimore. I can't remember his name. Yeah, I swear he got kicked poster, out. Did you say Poster Boy yet? Yeah, Poster Boy. Poster Boy was the first cat, man. You know how much times I used to listen to Jurassic Harlem, bro? That was my joint back in the day. <laughs> Poster Boy, that was my dude. Hey, but listen, Twiz and Tim Timberland, they got the versus battle. We could do a battle. We could do you and Blind Fury right here on a Mike Power show. The world would want to see that. Blind Fury. <laughs> Daniel Sun said he could smoke you. That's what he said. Just playing. I'm just, I'm, I'm throwing for it. it. You know what I mean? It's all love. It's You're a sport. You're supposed to feel like that. Yeah, yeah, of course. You got to feel like that. You got to feel like you can smoke anybody, you know? That's that's just how you're supposed to feel. That's hip-hop. No disrespect. No disrespect to Blind Fury, you know? I feel like I could smoke anybody on any given day. And they and he's, you know, I could get smoked on any given day, too, you know? So bite the, I'm ready to bite the bullet, though, you know? All right, we're going to do it here right on the Mike Power Show. Um <laughs> So let's let's stop. I just want to just I just want to stop right now, and do something very important. Let's praise Ito, right now, because you said Yo, he's the first one man. over here in the states that showed you love. Can you talk about that relationship with Ito? Yo, man, the crazy thing is, uh, I mean, Yo V Don has been one of my favorite producers forever, bro. Since Vado, you know, Large in the Streets. So I was always checking for V-Don instrumentals and, like, just any V-Don joints that anybody who worked with V-Don. So I found, like, an Ito music video, like, way back in the days, bro. I think I was still in high school. And it was Ito, you know? And that joint was dope. And then fast forward, and I'm on my SoundCloud, because I used to post all my shit up on SoundCloud. And I checked my SoundCloud DM, and Ito's in my DM, like, saying, like, yo, I fuck with your shit. Let's work. I was like, yo, this is crazy. You know, like, I know this, this same cat I've I seen on the V-Don joint. So, boom, uh, I sent him a joint, me and Gallo Point, for a Gunner's Tape uh, project. Sent him that joint. Like, two days later, he, he sent me the vocals back. He smoked the verse. Um, pretty sure that joint's called Dark Shadows. And, and then, bro, like, after that, he got me on the V-Don project. You know, the Omerta project. And that really helped. Uh, that really helped my career, you know. He helped push my career forward in that way. He didn't have to do that, you know. I wasn't the biggest name, but he did that, you know. Just just did that out of love. And then, you know, a couple times I I'd, I'd go to Rochester, but I would never get to link up with him. And then one time we linked up at a show, and it was crazy, man. Like actually getting to meet Ito, and we we're chilling, drinking, you know, smoking. Yo, Ito's the man, bro. Ito's still my favorite. In the game, Ito's my favorite. I feel like he's got the best pen in the game. Ito's one dude that I might be able to smoke Blind Fury, but I can't smoke Ito, bro. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And he's a real one. Like, absolutely a real Rochester. one. Rochester's a real city, man. Like, a real crazy upstate, man. Upstate just got that vibe, bro. Hell yeah, man. Definitely. I don't know if you saw my, my interview with Ito, but... You know, somebody got punched in the mouth in the backyard. Hey, punched you in the mouth. <laughs> yeah. We didn't see the whole thing on tape, oh, but Ito goodness. kept it 100. He took the phone outside and was showing what was going on. He had to kick people out. It was wild, but, I mean, it was some real shit. You know what I mean? Because of your complexion, because of your ethnicity, do you catch flack in this industry from people? Mm, not really, because anybody who knows me, they know, you know, I'm South African, you know? Anybody who knows me, they know where I'm coming from, you know? They know what time it is. And then outside of that, nah, not really, you know? Mm -hmm. Not really. 
it's just um I think I just I don't know what it was about me. I mean, me, bro, I'm not the biggest fan of white rappers. You feel me? I'm not the biggest fan of white rappers. So I could understand where people are coming from if, they, if they're not feeling it. But, I mean, I just try and give them that raw every time, you know, and then hopefully that's enough. Okay. So you, you have a black mom then? I do. Okay. That's what's up. Bro, it's all love. Like, I mean, like, say my dude Cypher Soze, right? Me and him been making music since we was 13 years old, you know? So the first time I brought him over to my crib to record, because I always had a recording set up and all that since I was a little kid, he came over and saw my mom, you know, and he's like, oh, shit, you know? So it's like, that's kind of, it's like always like, a little, I don't really, I don't really broadcast it like that. You know, if anybody, I, I've been, I, I put pictures of my mom up on Instagram and shit and people don't hit me up like, yo, you know, like, just like some of the five percenters and shit, they're like, yo, I didn't know that you were, you got original man in you and shit, you know? So it's like, you know, if you if you do the if you do the research or whatever, you might find out. But you know, shout out to all my South Africans, man. Cape Town, Johannesburg, my grandma, Kimberly, um, friggin' uh, Durban. You know, I got family all over South Africa. You know, and they're not white. Right. I feel and and so and let's just make the, and this ain't gonna be a long rant. But you know, we don't do the fucking racism discrimination over here. I know I got some whole temps in the building. I feel you. The struggle is fucking real. But I was raised that you treat others the way you would want to be treated, right? My mother was in the civil rights movement. She was in the struggle. So we don't just blanket paint somebody with this kind of brush. We don't want white folks painting us with that broad brush. We don't paint white folks with that broad brush. I said this in the Pounds interview. We're going to talk about Pounds in a minute. But it's been uh, legendary white people in this industry been holding it down and kept it thorough, didn't trade up on us, didn't throw us under the bus. And I'm talking about, like I said, Beastie Boys, third base. And it's a, it's a Quite a few white dudes out here spitting right now that spitting the real shit. Um, Pounds is one of them. He spoke very highly of you. Talk to me about your relationship with Pounds. Man, Pounds is a cool ass dude, man. I met him on my first my first time ever being in Jersey, New York. Uh, me and Crime Apple had a show in Jersey City. You know, shout out to Jersey City, New Jersey. What's up, Jersey? And uh, Pounds, pull, Pounds pulled up to the show and he was in the back. Like, yo, the show was packed, bro. And then there's like a little backyard of the venue. And I went out there and Pounds got like a big ass bag of weed, bro. Huge bag of weed, right? Rolling blunts out of the big ass bag of weed. And he was like, yo, like you and Crime Apple come to the studio tomorrow in Queens, you know? So boom, we pulled up to the studio. And um, man, we made that joint called 55K. And then we went and shot the video right away, right after that, you know? And then... We was just chilling, man, and and um, a lot of times since I've gone back and all and linked up with Pounds a lot of times, you know, my uh, my man Mercenary, my main video guy, best video guy in the game, he shot a lot of work for Pounds, and um, Pounds got that one joint called Traffic. He told me the beat, and uh, Dwayne, Dwayne on the hook, R and B, like a singer, you know, he's mad ill with the vocals. And that was, like, one of the craziest nights of my life, bro. I took a little bit of LSD that night, so I was, <laughs> you know, I was on a wave. And that was a cool last night, man. Pound's a cool ass dude, bro. I'll never forget. They had, like, all the lighting and everything set up. It was at nighttime. They had this dope-ass Jeep Wrangler. And uh, I remember I walked around the corner to the bodega to go get me a little beer and shit. And I heard the shorty say, oh, shit, that's Action Bronson. I was like, yo. <laughs> <laughs> So, yo, shout out my man Pounds, bro. Always showed me nothing but love. And every time that we kick it, it's always good times, man. Always so good times. I'm, I'm a, I want to unpack something that you said right there. So um, you was on LSD. I never did it before. Um, so is, is you put that on your tongue, right? Is that the, What happens? What happened when you did it? I mean, shit, bro. I did it a couple times before. Not too many times. But that time was, like, the best, the best, the most fun I ever had, you know, because I was in the city. We're going all over the place, um, bro. It's just a, it was just a good vibe, bro. Like, I mean, I don't even, I can't even explain it, bro. It's just like, uh, you just feel the energy of the universe, you know. Mm, yeah. and, I, and at that point, I was feeling all the positive energy, you know, because I'm making good connections. I was surrounded with good people. We were being productive. We were shooting a video, you know. It wasn't even my joint. I was just an extra in the video, you know. Mm. And man. Lots of fun, bro. We ended up going back to Pounds had a dope ass hotel in Hoboken, right on the water. 
So I was on like the balcony. I could see, I could see the skyline in New York. The 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 lights were reflecting across the Hudson, bro. It was it was crazy, man. I'll you never forget go back that to that day, moment. Man. I like that. Now, Toronto is a beautiful city, but do you ever think about maybe setting up shop and making uh, upstate New York your permanent home? Um, no, I definitely, I definitely would uh, want to move to the states, man. Eventually, bro. But I would, I think I would probably move into the city, you know, and probably move to Jersey, bro, because I got mad people in Jersey, mad connections. Shout out my dude, Cram Apple. He kind of he kind of set me up in Jersey, and then I was able to network and make connections out there. And I love Jersey, and it's close to New York, you know, but it's not as expensive as New York. So maybe Jersey, bro. But maybe, you know, upstate, I love upstate, but, you know, upstate's dangerous, bro. <laughs> well, that's what I'm hearing. That's what I'm hearing. <laughs> hey. Upstate's a dangerous place. But you talk about Jersey. I mean, listen, one time I got off the freeway coming back, I think, from Virginia, going, going, trying to go somewhere else, and ended up uh, off an of accident, I think, East Orange. You was in Newark. Man, listen, what year was that? Shit. Jersey's Maybe. dangerous, too, man. Jersey's Ooh. dangerous, too, bro. I almost got robbed twice in 30 minutes in Jersey, in Jersey Ooh. City, bro. I See, I know enough about the hood because I was raised in the hood to know – this ain't the place that I should be putting my foot on the brake at all. Like, I got the vibe. If I step on the brake at a red light, somebody just might jump out on my shit. So I didn't stop at no red light. <laughs> I got back on the fucking freeway when I came through Jersey. I respect y'all out there. But Jersey, if you do relocate to Jersey, then you might have a better chance of maybe linking up and doing a song with Red Man. Do you want to do a song with Red Man? One day, man, we're going to make that happen, bro. Has to, bro. That's... Uh, Red Man, I need a joint with Red Man, and I need a beat. I need a Mad Lib beat before I'm done, bro. That, and then we good. That's what's up. I see that. Oh, there is there's a vlog type of video that you yep. did called New Jersey Drive. Oh, uh, that wasn't me. That was my dude Raph, man. Raph, Raph Sinatra. My ten percent alert right there. I'm in that though. Yeah, hell yeah. That was the that was the same show I was talking about where Pounds was there. That was the Crime Apple show. The show was called New Jersey Drive. My man Raph uh, from the IAC, shout out to all the IAC and the Low Lives. Uh, he shot that, but um, I got a I got a vlog series video about that whole show and everything, pounds and everything called Northern Takeover or some shit like that. It's on the yeah, I saw that one too. Yep. So, but yeah, my man Raph, Raph Sinatra, he uh he shot that uh, New Jersey Drive joint. We actually only got a few more questions, so this is going great. Let me do this. So in that vlog, you were, you was uh you was rocking a small club. What's the energy like for you, being in a in a small club, um where cats is like two inches in front of your face while you're spitting? What's that energy like? I love it, bro. I love it. You know, it's uh, bro. That's like that's the essence right there. You know, like. You will, it's game time, you know, it's game time. There's no, sh there's no flashing lights. There's nothing, you know, to, to make you look anything more than what you are, you know? So, bro, that show was legendary. Uh, uh, Rome Streets was, was there. Sauce Heist, Uncle John. Bro, you know how much legend, like, yo, that was a legendary show, bro. It was crazy. I love those small club shows, you know? And then, I mean, yo, I've done some small clubs. I, I rocked the Buddha Pub in Rochester. I seen Ito rock that, man. Ain't nobody get more hometown love than Ito, bro. It's like, Ito had the Buddha Pub packed. Like, I love those small shows. That was kind of what happened at my show when the shooting happened. And then the only thing that happened, like, it's just like, now I just can't. Because I'm a type of dude, I like to mingle, bro. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not bougie like that. I'm not, yeah. out, I'm not unreachable, you know? I like to go shake hands with the people. So that was the one thing my people was telling me in, in these small shows is like, all right, you know what? We always going to have somebody with you now when you move around. Because me, I'm going to be on the stage one minute, then I'm jumping off the stage. I'm at the merch table. I'm signing shit, you know? So I like to move around and mingle. But that's the only thing, you know? I feel like the shooting would only happen in Toronto because Toronto has a negative vibe like that. There's a dark cloud over the city, you know? There's a lot of dangerous places all over the world, but... Toronto has a specific bad vibe, whereas when I go to the States, Jersey, uh, New York City, uh, upstate, Buffalo, I don't rock, I don't rock the Rochester. It was, even though those are very dangerous spots, bro, in Rochester, I see more guns in the Buddha pub than I've seen everywhere else put together at one show. 
but it was no bad vibes, you know? Everybody was there for love, showing love. So, I mean, yo, I love rocking those small clubs, bro. Packing small clubs up, and, uh, yo, people get to rock it, man, and it's it's a good time. You think about it, room full of, room full of gangsters, thugs, hip-hop heads, poetry enthusiasts, all came out to see you, you know what I mean? And they all right there, you know what I mean? You you can actually reach out and touch these people, you know what I mean? And I, when I watched that video, I was like, the space between you and the crowd was so non-existent, you know what I mean? I was like, damn, they they right up in his face right now doing this thing. It was crazy. Somebody even walked up on the stage. Me and Crime Apple was uh, doing one of our joints, and some, some dude walked up on the stage, bro, and... It was like, yo, we didn't know what was going to happen. We didn't know if, if we had to knock them out or what, you know? So, like, that's how there's no security stopping people from coming up on the stage. Like, a dude literally walked up on the stage and, like, grilled me as I was doing my verse. And then, like, somebody pulled him off the stage. But that's like, yeah, man, there's no barricade. There's nothing. Like, when you're rapping, you're going and you're hailing up the fans. And, you know, you're dapping people up and... I love those shows, bro. Obviously, I want to get up to those big shows, those big stages and shit, but nothing, there's nothing that compares to, like, those small, getting, like, 200 people in 150 max capacity spots, so it's shoulder to shoulder. You can't even move. Like, bro, that's how it was in the Toronto show when the shooting happened. People were getting trampled, bro, after the shot went off. Stampede, bro. I was running on top of people, bro. Like, I'm stepping on people and shit. That's how we had it in T.O. We packed that venue, bro. And it was all blessed, all good vibes until the unfortunate situation happened. But that's never going to deter me from doing another one, you know? I just might not do – the next time I do a show in Toronto, we're just going to have upgraded security because Toronto cats are stupid like that, you know? People don't really have respect like that. Where When I go to New York and I go to upstate and I go to Jersey, people have respect for their culture, you know? Mm. That they, the shit happens outside. You know, the shit never really happens in the venue where you're going to fuck up people's business, you know, and fuck up people who don't pay their, their ticket price, hard-earned money, came to buying up the merch, everything. Nah, there's good vibes everywhere else. You know, Toronto's just got a dark cloud over it right now. And one of the things you always also, as, as an older guy, I'm going to have to, you know, just put that out in the atmosphere for you that um, so you will know that I said it. You know, sometimes people pay money to come to your show and they a hater. You gotta watch out for those. You gotta watch out for those motherfuckers. They be in the crowd. You they'll be bumped. You won't even be able to see it on their fucking face a lot of times. You know what I mean? Yep. So I mean, always I would say always keep. It's nothing soft about keeping your team with you. You know what I mean? If you got a Michael Jordan on your team, they, they gonna need that security. You know what I mean? So make I would say make sure you have your people around you because I I believe you are that Michael Jordan type as well. You know what I mean? Um, you got Cardinal Official on this album. Yes, sir, man. Shout out Cardinal, man. Legend, bro. Straight up legend. He snapped. Yo, he Dude. killed it. What? Dude. Killed it. Verse of the year shocked. so far. I was shocked, bro. So, what's up with what's up with him? Is he is he doing this thing now? Is he over here with the underground? That's what he doing. Bro, he did it on the record, man. He he um, we know we had some connects to him, you know, especially a son, a son, one of a son's friends is cool with Cardinal. And there was some talks about us doing some records together. And then that one fried eggs joint, I mean, that Future Wave beat is so crazy. And I laced that at my crib, sent it to A-Sun. A-Sun laced it. And we were like, you know what? If uh, we're talking about doing a record with Carter now, let's send him this one. And, bro, a couple of days later, this guy sent it back. And I was like, yo, people, pff, I, you ain't never heard Carter now rap like that. I was barred it down. Barred it down to the maximum. What's the name of that song again? Fried eggs, fried eggs, fried eggs. Y'all go listen to this joint. They all snap on it, but it's like if you know Cardinal, I'm saying it like the way you said. I used to say Cardinal, <laughs> but he said Cardinal. <laughs> but let me show the respect that if you know him from back in the day, and you go turn on this song, trust me. I didn't even put. I didn't even post it on my IG because I wanted to ask about it here and the surprise motherfuckers. Um, the surprise the fuck. Hey, what's different? What's something? That's different on y'all McDonald's menu than from the United States. Bro, our menu is lacking compared to you guys, bro. Like what? All the the thing is we get the we get the Amer we get the American commercials. So we see all the flash shit that you guys get, but we don't get none of it, bro. Like y'all get the good spicy, spicy chickens or like or the or the the sauces. Y'all got like spicy chipotle or spicy buffalo. 
We don't get none of that, bro. The big, our menu is lacking, bro. I actually haven't been to McDonald's in a minute. So, you know, I might indulge when I actually get back to the city. Because I'm literally on an island right now, surrounded by water. You know, this isn't road accessible. There is no McDonald's around here. But, I mean, bro, I, what's my favorite shit, man? I like uh, Arby's, bro. Whenever I go to a, I go to a spot, my uh, tattoo dude, he's in... Um, I'm triggered. What's it called? Some Pennsylvania, East Stroud's, East Stroudsburg or something like that. In Pennsylvania, there's an Arby's right beside the tattoo shop. Ooh, I crush Arby's, bro. We don't. I don't think we have Arby's out here. You gotta go with the the beef and cheddar joints. That's what you're doing. Nah, I go with the I go with the spicy chicken joints, man. Those spicy chicken ones, man. Oh, I like okay. spicy shit. Okay, my girl gonna see this interview. She's gonna be like, "See, other people eat Arby's. We argue all the time about Arby's." Hey, so buffalo you, chicken. Do you think they don't have the spicy stuff up, up at the McDonald's in Canada? Is uh, I'm gonna ask this respectfully. Is it is that a white thing? Because I mean, maybe a lot of white people can't take too much spice. Is that what it is? Uh, I think like yeah, in general, yeah. But if you're for, if a lot of white people in Toronto, I mean, Toronto is a very Caribbean city, you know. So you you go to the jerk spot. And, you know, there's mad white people in there, you know, getting oxtail, getting jerk chicken, you know, spicy beef patties, all of that, you know. So I think in general, yeah, a lot of white people can't take spice, but it, a lot of a, a lot of the, the white people in Toronto is such a, uh, such a big Caribbean influence. Yeah, you know, they're a different breed of white people in Toronto. So, and just so people don't get it twisted, because I mean, we talk, uh, we talk about race on this show. We do, it's all love. But so now I ask them that question. Somebody might get offended. Now I gotta ask them a question about black people. Do black people tear up Waffle Houses in Toronto as well? You don't gotta answer that. I don't want to set you up. Cause Yo, got, um, my yeah. mom, my mom lives in Florida, right? My mom yeah. be in Florida more times, right? Fort Myers. Yo, if I'm, I crush the Waffle Houses. You know, the worst Waffle House I ever went to was in New Orleans. They, I, I was in New Orleans for a show, and they had the worst Waffle House ever, bro. Why? Like, I don't even know. They just didn't put no love. In, they just didn't put no love into the food, bro. It's like <laughs> the turkey bacon was microwaved, and oh. it, it was, yeah, it was bad, bro. Oh. So, the yo Waffle House in Florida. I mean, yo, I want to go to Georgia. You know, I've never been to Georgia. I want to go to eat the Waffle House in Atlanta. You know, but. The one that I went to in New Orleans was super trash. So you must have been pissed off because, correct me if I'm wrong, but you don't even go into a Waffle House unless you're drunk or high or both. Right, so you oh, was ready yeah. to I was, I mean, I was, whew, I was ready to go in, bro. I was with my dude. We was with a couple, a couple girls. I mean, he's married. So, like, I had, like, a couple girls that we were chilling with from the show and whatever. We went there, and, bro, it was terrible. You know, everybody thought their food was terrible, bro. The, the hash browns was, was garbage, like, <laughs> no seasoning. There was, like, no seasoning in the food, bro. But aside from that, though, New Orleans had some of the best food I ever ate in my life. So, I'm brown bag out. money. Talk to me about brown bag money. That's my squad, man. That's They go back a long time, man. Uh, that was just me and my people I used to hustle with back in the days. And uh, a lot of them, they didn't make music. And a lot of them, uh, they're doing other things now. And so now that's the squad, you know, that's that's just, that was my thing, always my thing, you know. So now it's just me and my people now, you know, me, Soze, A-Son, Future Wave, uh, Family Gang Black, you know, just, and then a lot of people that, uh, my dude Mookie, Mercenary, um, a lot of people behind the scenes, you know. So shout out to my team, man. That's my team, man. Brown bag money, man. Keep your pockets mm -hmm. full. And we know you tight with the uh with, with the cloth. Uh, you know, I had regs on here before, so I just wanted to give you some time to talk about your affinity for the cloth and your relationship. Shout to Riggs. Love those guys, man. Straight, straight stand-up individuals, man. Just like real life samurais, man. Like those dudes, especially Riggs, you know, but all of them, bro. They they uh, move like they prepare for war, you know, Mav, Mooch, uh, Rob Gates. Like, I, like, literally, when I say I was going up there, like, once a month at least and go to their lab, go link up. I mean, yo, Riggs and Mav were there when the shooting happened in Toronto, you know? They I, they were – I, I had them on the show, you know? So they were all there. Um, love those dudes, man. Those, everybody needs to go listen to everything that they ever dropped. That new Rig, uh, that new Rob Gates and Mav tape is crazy with Big Ghost. You know, me and Mooch are working on a tape. Uh, Riggs and Future Wave have a tape. Work, that's being worked on. Can't say enough good things about the cloth, man. Every time we go through Rochester, they show us, you know, they 
it's great hospitality, man. Those dudes and Riggs is uh Riggs is like the leader, you know, and he's like a special dude, man. Real special dude. Like real when I say he's the real life samurai, like that dude is ready for war, you know? Like I don't know anybody ready for war like Riggs. Got you. Hey, so listen, am I right to be afraid of Rob Gates? Cause I feel like I don't want to set him off. Hell yes, bro. Hell what? yes. Yo, funny story. Hopefully my shit doesn't cut off when I say this. Uh, last year, maybe the year before, Labor Day Monday. No, it was last year. Labor Day Monday, I went to Rochester in the hood, bro, Cuba place. I got attacked by a pit bull, right? We was doing a, we was doing a video shoot in front of this trap house. Pit bull got off the leash, came for me. I'm the only white dude on the whole street, bro. 60 motherfuckers on the street. Only white dude there. Pit bull comes for me. One of the homies, I'm not going to say who, right before that had big 357 on the waist, said any of these dogs get off, I'm shooting them. <laughs> Boom, two minutes later, the dog gets off the leash, comes for me. I'm dancing with the dog. The dog's trying to jump up, bite me in the face. I'm getting under him, throwing the dog in the air, hitting him with a Barry Sanders shake. Boom, throwing the dog up in the air, right? Yeah. Right after that. Uh, one of the one of the big homies over there is like, hey, yo, Daniel, son, I like the way you handle yourself, son. I like the way you handle yourself. So then we shoot the video, right? The video is called, uh, it's me, Riggs, and Rob Gates. I forget what the joint is called. It's off of my tape called Yeno Dushi. I forget what the joint is called, but if you search Daniel, son, Riggs, and Rob Gates, you'll find the video, right? Um, so after everybody leaves, it's just us and Rob Gates, right? And then and I'm telling you, just 60 months, Labor Day Monday, 60 motherfuckers on the street. Then Rob Gates leaves, right? He's like, yo, I'm outie. I turn my head, I turn back, Rob Gates is gone, bro. I was like, I'm with my dude, Mercenary, and my dude, Swerve. And we got all our video equipment and shit. We're on the, pretty, we're on the east side of Rochester, bro, because it was like after the pit bull attacked me, they're like, yo, son, you got your east side learner's permit today. Yo, <laughs> let me tell you, Rob Gates, yo, that man, special dude, bro. All those dudes from the club, special dudes, but yeah. And you, everybody should be afraid of Rob Gates. <laughs> Good. Then I'm glad my fear is very much called for. But yo, all those dudes, straight stand-up individuals, you know, like on some gangster shit, but I will also have them over at my crib, at my mom's crib to eat dinner, you know, like real gangster and a gentleman type shit. That's what's up. I feel like Rob Gates is probably body slamming his, his demons when he's in that booth. You know, he going yo, that to- man, That man is a demon, bro. Like you can see it in his eyes, bro. You just, Real, when you talk about struggle, that's why I say I didn't struggle no more than the next man. Yo, Rob Gates, you can hear that man's shit, bro. Yes, yes, and the love, love his voice and love his bars as well. Um, and I know that your phone is about to go dead. It was a pleasure for me to have you on the platform. Don't leave out of here when I finish doing this because I want you to do a drop for me. Um, but what for I sure, what I, I, I want to say. It, it was an honor to have you on the show. I know you're going big places. What my, what my prayer is that when we come off of quarantine, that uh, upstate and y'all y'all will get together and y'all going to go on tour. I think y'all could probably do 5,000 seaters. I think I, I think the, the pump is prime for y'all arrival to come do a massive tour. I think people are going to come out and support. And you can show people how to enjoy real fucking hip hop and not shoot nobody and not get into no fights. And I think y'all can take this all around the country. And, I, and, and of course, and yo, you, got, you got fans in, in London, right? In the UK. hundred, Yeah, Europe, bro. Me and Riggs was already talking about that. The show that I had in Boston was me and Riggs. You know, like, that, the cloth and brown bag money, that's that's going to be the shows. You know, like, we, we wanted to do it because it was a brown bag money, the cloth show in Toronto that got shot up. That's why we wanted to run it back, you know, for, for everybody that came. Because there's people from Boston, New Jersey, New York, Indiana, all over the place that, that came, paid money, bought plane tickets, came to Toronto didn't get to see us go on stage, right? So me and Riggs, we already know we're going to run it back from New York to the West Coast to Europe to down south, everywhere. You know, those are the homies, bro. We travel, to, we travel well together. That's what's up. So we are blessed and honored to have the future legend, Daniel Sun, with us. Thank you for stopping through. We wish you nothing but the best. We want you to stay safe. We will be looking for the next project, Brown Bag Money. We will be looking for that reset of that show with you and the cloth. Um, Daniel, son, thank you so much for coming through. I really appreciate your time. And of course, thank you for connecting with me. And now go connect with each other. I'm Mike Powers. I'm out.